first of first of all, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me. It was a great pleasure and a great honor to be among the people who taught me my basic medicine since I'm from in Shams University at the base. A little bit. So I will try to, to keep a line all along the presentation whether things are intuitive. I would declare that I received Congress invitation and some honoraria for a presentation. So the thing is, since the early studies, the therapy has got a 50% mortality. This thing, like intuitively, we are in front of a lost but battle. Yeah. Historically, however, William of invented many more uh, drug machines, medical machines, I'm sorry. Uh, realized the first bad session to the second book, and interestingly, the 15 trials, 15 failed trial. The lady he, he saved, actually, the world saved, was, she was a Nazi, a Nazi collaborator and told him not to touch her. He insisted and he did it. So is it intuitive or counterintuitive? That's, I will try to touch on this. It, it should be, in, to my mind, renal therapy should be the most counterintuitive treatment and efficient we know about. Uh, my agenda would be that general Cadigo um, scheme of management is, I am a big fan of Cadigo. We'll, we'll go on, on renal replacement therapy, the physical chemical principles very quickly. The modality, I would like to present you with three clinical vignettes, the applied scheme to these clinical cases, and then we'll try to emphasize some of specificities of each case. The general scheme of management was Cadigo at the, uh, to start with is a homogenization standardization tool. It permitted large studies comparing practice protocols in all aspects of kidney management. I need to say not only AKI, including renal replacement, of course. Um, we need to appreciate Cadigo. We need to know that basically in AKI, at least the, the, the case series scoped 500,000 patients. So Cadigo is like, go read if you know Cadigo. Okay, the general recommendations very quickly, it's not the focus of this presentation, that Cadigo tells us to discontinue all nephrotoxic drug to start with, to ensure volume status and perfusion pressure. Uh, people of uh, ICU know this very well. To consider the hemodynamic monitoring, will I, will I put an arterial line with an wooden type put an arterial line? Question to be asked. They're not clear about how, how frequently need, need I to, to monitor serum creatinine or even urine output. Avoid hyperglycemia, preferably insulin. And above all, do not harm. So do uh, avoid every nephrotoxic drug, particularly radio contrast examinations. Just, just to, to, to have a small, uh, let me say, meditation on the thing. One and a half to two times baseline creatinine and or 26 micromole per liter increase with minus five. If you look, if you look well to this, to this table, you'll see it's all about function. It's all about things you can see readily. You, you, you can have a simple creatinine nowadays you may have uh, strips to measure creatinine, and urine suffice to, to survey urine. Okay. Of course, things are not very easy in the practice. Surrogate baseline creatinine value is something we are looking for. There are a lot of stuff. The missing creatinine on admission of our patient, a lot and a lot of studies are simply trying to away logically and rationally surrogate impair the baseline that don't we need always to be very conscious with the exposures. This is the precipitating factor. The, these are all Cadigo lines. Huh? So if the sepsis is a 
precipitating factor, what about susceptibility of my patients? Is he female? Is he black race? If he has a chronic a baseline chronic kidney disease, is he diabetic? Is he cancerous? Is he anemic? So it's always an interplay between exposure factors or precipitating factors and susceptibilities factors. Even replacement models available in RT for his bike history. It was initially designed for AKI case dialysis, invented for AKI cases. Baseline, it was to save the one who's got the catastrophic syndrome and hence his renal failure. It is estimated, although intuitively it seemed a lost battle, it is estimated that renal replacement methods decreased mortality by at least 50% all along the history we have it. Actual modern rationale, however, because things move, is towards more toward the intermittent type of dialysis. We need to establish as quickly as possible the homeostatic balance, maintain chronic kidney patients alive after baseline proofs. And I always remember the, the cough case, the high mortality of AKI case, cases, particularly more so post raises lots of questions. What kind of people to have the renal replacement therapy? When to start? What modality? What anticoagulation and when to stop? So the, here we will go very quickly, I hope. The dialysis rationale is double. It's always a blood purification of accumulated toxin, not only uremic toxin, but toxins. Correct hypervolemia through alteration. This is mainly realized by, by convection. The, 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 the sign of or the blood purification of toxic diffusion and convection, both. The, what do the Cadigo say, as always? They say, we do in a replacement therapy immediately. If there is a life-threatening complication, we can consider it. We can withhold it. We can just think a few hours days. If there is no life-threatening condition related to renal failure, yet we would like to handle this more clearly. Life-threatening indications are renal indications, usually hyperkalemia, metabolic indication to think fluid replacement is you. It's always a bridge towards more. Um, more ma more management uh, choices and will go either or or in a replacement therapy for AKI. First one only the models adapted to the ICU cases. Continuous so hybrid therapy where. I don't have all the machines. I, yet I insist on adapting my machine and my modality and my physical to dialysis. The but it's it's high infectious uh, potential. The dialyzer membrane. The the Cadigo each by compatible now a bit is not a big issue. Either polysulfone based or I'm not exhaustive in what I'm saying. I offense killed somebody. But with high convective and diffusive indices, in what concerns biocompatibility, in what concerns efficacy, if we are into 2022, things are good, but we need always to know that allergies is there. Very quickly, uh, diffusive techniques. There are there is a dialysis. Sorry, there is a dialysate flow. There is a dialysis on one side of the membrane. In diffusive, so passes the membrane, not the solvent. In convective techniques which is hemophilia, uh, 
we apply pressure on the blood side more so on the dialysate side, negative pressure on the fluid plus water use pressure. It takes a the solute as acceptance through and conviction. Diffusive cleavage achieved thing to media. Well, well, uh -huh. Substi yes, when you use a lot of convection, when you force your, your solvent and your solute to the other side, to the filtration side, you need to have to, and you need to, to be careful to calculate or to have good math what, what you are doing. In SCR, difficulties are need, nothing but actively variating blood dialysis and mean to hemodynamic balance and achieve our treatment. Staff, CVVH, CVD, CHF are intentionally omitted all what's arteriovenous. We don't use it anymore. Nobody uses it. I hope you're not due to multiple arterial Anyway, a quick comparison. Um, all needs vascular access except for lots of coagulations, regional citrate, for instance, the duration fact of the matter in intermittent hemodialysis, four to five hours through time. In hybrid techniques or in slow dialysis techniques that still is intermi intermittent, we are more towards 12 hours. We, we are playing actively rate. We need to have a, a high dialysate rate to have up. The basic one is a milliliter per minute. So 30 liters per hour. That in regular in that and you up to 800 milliliter. Well, if you look to a CCR, CCRRT technique, you are looking at a 60 meters. If you're looking at an intermediate, Things that are intermediate as by standard. The cost look we definitely consider I better do nowadays even with CRT use are looking at the virgin machine CRT. So the cost like the word perceived cost. The adaptive intermittent hemodialysis is not clear. CRRT. This has many times proved many times because they are colleagues from the Saudi Arabia. The nice uh, and up to date meta analysis. It's a nice one. That's all. So let's now shift to, to the clinical vignette. AKI associated with SAD1, AKI with cardiovascular syndrome, and then the hepatorenal syndrome. So one stayed 70 years old, who was admitted to ICU directly in a state of shock. In her past history, she has type 2 that is admitted. She's high tensor. That's not a lot. Uh, on examination, her blood pressure was moderately low. Now, pressure 65, a little more. 135 blood. Uh, it was using. And guarding under the, the precipitating factors looks like a sepsis, a right side, pyelonephritis, most probably, clinician as well otherwise. On day one, she was admitted to ICU in the afternoon. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for the units. I'm using uh, uh, the international units, what I use. It's about 3.8 milligram per dc. Of course, very high, so very high inflammatory condition. Uh, potassium was good. Positive blood culture the, to start with. This, this, this tells about the severity. And we were pending and sensitivity of the uh, ciftraxone to start with, with the quinolone. Sorry. We worked on the memories received crystalloids. Crystalloids are the recommended filling uh, liquids, actually. What type? 
large debates, I, go, I won't go through. The antibiotic broad spectrum then adapted to sensitivity, of course. Vasopressor drug, which one? Is it norepinephrine, dopamine? Not, uh, it's not in my scope. Anyway, in this case, it was norepinephrine. Urine output did not improve, although, and 16 hours after her addition, we were considering we have the, the material at all. This is an Edwards machine, <laughs> anyway. So we decided, I don't know, for, for no big good, let me say, that we will use CVVHDF. CVV filtration will be nice. And we did first session, it ended up to 36 parameters. I would like to go quickly. Uh, the venous axis is assures always by a central catheter, um, preferably jugular or femoral, according to the Cadigo. Sorry. Anyway, I'll go more quickly. Dialysate flow with a million, a liter one used in post dilution mode. This is the mostly used nowadays, easier. You have a control. You have you have controls on gene. Things are quite easy. We know we do not need anymore to consider CRRT as a very complicated maneuver. That's what I think about the subject. In we 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 were very very basic. It was continuous unfair. Well, we were lucky. Things went extremely well. This patient recovered diuresis at 1.2 liters in 24 hours. She, she took one, only one, 30 for CVHDF. At 1.6 milligram, it put for state. Wow. The antibiotics we use were an association of ceftriaxone and the quinolone oral. Queen alone are very good at oral absorption. Well, I need to stop there. In the pathophysiology of AKI, the classic view was that we are in septic shock, so vasoplegic patient, the renal blood flow is down, and the is, a, is, a, is about an acute tubular necrosis. Nowadays, this is challenge. I would like the renal blood flow maintained or even may increase of associated by all the power of this the, the problem the pathophysiology the essential pathophysiology is one of inflammatory uh, and we did touch this in many presentations in this congress so the emphasis put on inflammation on tubular cell function dysregulations and other things the AKI sepsis necessitating CRRT. Let's let's go back to my question. Is it intuitive or counterintuitive? The AKI sepsis necessitating CRRT is known to be of dismal prognosis. Okay, this lady was completely opposite to this. It may hold the advantage. I did I did intentionally not to mention the cytokines. When I went to France, I can think of at least four teams in in Paris only working on measurements many, many measurements, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6, interleukin-2, before, after CRRT, we've gone no evidence up to now knowledge to set direct cytokine inflammatory markers or cytokines infers through the, the very strict evidence-based medicine of nowadays either mortality or morbidity are there are they the only parameters no is that intuitive no intuitive I will do a convective if you, if you expose your patient to a convective technique you are handling cytokines and you are decreasing i i may even think that they that quickly because we were this okay not to waste time. The second case is cardiorenal syndrome. It's a, it's a male, 65 years old. 
he was not very he was not very distressed but a lot of susceptibilities factors he's a, he's a diabetic on metformin and forsiga he's hypertensive on ramipril he is already on uh, night ventilation for his for his um, sleep apnea and he is a long time atrial fibrillation patient on the anticoagulant and amiodarone he's overweight his blood pressure was even high 160 or 20 he was irregular and he had rapid AF on examination. He was limited on, on oxygen saturation and he needed oxygen since admission. Could tell that he is starting to be congested. The cardiac ultrasound confirm, confirmed as regard the renal characters and parameters. Creatinine was not high, one, 164 micromoles, it's about 1.8. Gram per liter. Potassium was okay. He was acidic. Interestingly, the patient was not on, on Lasix. He didn't have furosemide in his original treatment list. The furosemide challenge was decided. It says if you're naive to furosemide, you have a one milligram per kilo. That's what we did. We even pushed the, the dose to 250 milligrams. The patient start to complain of increased dyspnea, and so we considered CRRT. Catheter insertion presented a challenge. He was orthopnic, so the jugular will let down the jugular position for hemorrhagic method machine available at this center. So we decided why not? Let's go for it. Their old proofs are with intermittent equivalent. He added the eight hour sled. The sessions hemodynamics, he had 160 of systolic pressure. Okay, and the hourly ultrafiltration prescribed 300 milliliter. Excuse me, the mistakes all along with so you feel like telling me this is wrong. I know it's okay, it's no problem. Upon, upon starting of the hemodialysis, things got down. He was called, we called the cardiac told us, no dubitrex in this case, he's already tachycardic, you cannot use it. So what to do? He was on, he was on the dialysis machine, things are not good. Of course, we withhold the ultrafiltration. We did, we, we decreased our, after, but we didn't change the dialysis concentration. We simply didn't have the, the stock for it. So the patient improved somewhat. Blood pressure remained quite low. It then dawned on us. We thought, what are we doing? Why are we dialyzing this patient? He has 164 mic micromole of creatinine. So what to do? We just the stop the dial and with ultrasound was activated. We decreased an hour of filtration to 150 ml per hour, and things got stable. So it could be finished uneventually with symptomatic improvement. The, the person, the patient was, um, was breathing normally. A daily protocol continued. We did sled for three consecutive days. At the end of the three days, he had lost four kilograms and he was feeling well and he was discharged. So we didn't do him any harm. We did him good to right. Big question. Okay. Read us that the diuretic ultrasound debate is a very old one. It's a very tough one. I took the example of this author, the United States. He, he, he published two randomized prospective, the best for evidence based, separated by seven years. The, the only thing that the results were metrically opposite. The first study that he published published in 2005, he, he, he found applications much bigger than the diametrically the opposite. And the association of diuretics or the center to do things got even more venomous, more studies were stopped and were stopped. 
at the order of the finding and all the specialists began to to give a whether 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 the interpretation of the studies were good thing particularly of an avoid hyper uh, heart failures that were terminated by its answers why the research in the salt the results were very difficult to interpret as what as regard whether to ultra filtrate or not what what will we gain, what we lose. Okay. This lady has a very nice discussion. Well, resistance. This patient was considered resistance. Choosing the right patient was the second key. And we found out following this patient that illness, and the good thing is that this patient population may be may they want they want to run the fail what way we may gain in avoiding further hospitalization period. Sorry. I'm very sorry. Yes. Nowadays, even the American Heart Association is recognizing ultra filtration. These machines are not. We are looking forward to have more on us. And they don't need an ICU, they just need. A vascular to the arm, a pick line, that's not so cool. And not theoretic responsiveness. If it's about you, alteration is not that brain um to present something after the present of the Namdu Fawahda. So Mr. D is a fine male uh, he presented with hematemesis uh, in any sectors uh, the data uh, is on liver cirrhosis not very advanced there were no signs of he went quickly committed regular work standard workup he was transfused and the endoscopy, all this took like from 12 to 16 hours, and he was good. On day two, the labs show a serum creatinine. Of course, we didn't have a baseline creatinine. That's a... Uh, 100 micromole, that's no previous known work. He is 9.6 grams. The urea was a little bit high. Anyway, the pathologist knows this better than us. He was a child score B, pending for C. He had a MELD score of 25. The urine, out, the urine output was unchecked. The patient felt better and wanted to, to go out. The best surprise was the third day, all the patient was his patient admitted to you. The absence of creatinine and Cadigo, it's a stage two AKR. We were systematic in this thing. Although he's a young patient, you need to consider palliative therapy to start with. Hitorinal syndrome is a palliative therapy case. Further investigation we needed, of course, to, to make the difference between hepatorenal and acute tubular necrosis. CRP was at 60 milligram. Urinary electrolytes, classical hepatorenal, less than one. The ultras. The ultrasound guided us, scientists got us the diagnosis, and unfortunately, it was a spontaneous bacterial peritonitis on top of the hematemesis. So, what's common is common. The patient was put on antibiotic, remained with stable, things went fine. We followed the, 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 the recommendation, perfusion test. Well, we didn't consider CRT since this patient. Uh, was diagnosed with hepatorenal syndrome, and we didn't know yet that he could be on the dialysis on an emergency transplantation list. The thing is, he got his the 
that the hepatologist of the hospital evaluated and for not drinking for two to three years was a good, perhaps a good candidate even for an emergency hepatic um, transplantation. We didn't do it. The patient died two years after. But the thing is, let's consider, can we offer him dialysis or can't we? Is it a clear cut thing that we cannot offer him dialysis? That was the question. The pathophysiology, as we did with the past vignettes, uh, splanking better dilatation and atrial Can you please uh, go ahead for the question? Because we are. I'm, I'm very sorry, sir. Oh, yes, sir. I'm very please. sorry. So I'm, I'm just here uh, showing you a great discussion between why do and why not do. Um, this is the French experience of the Akiki study, uh, in this one. It says outside of the not losing anything, what for five or six days, and then the mortality was higher, and it was that you don't need to do that if you are considered. I'm just finished. And uh, from 